Hello and welcome back. In this part, we're going to study borrowing and references in Rust. In the last lesson, as we have seen, we have studied together ownership and we understood that how ownership is very unique to Rust programming language and how ownership is very important for memory management. Well, in Rust, managing memory is crucial for ensuring both safety and performance. But what the word safety means here? I've seen a lot of YouTubers um, I mean, programming YouTubers, they talk a lot about safety in Rust, but no one seems to explain in details what safety means, why safety is important in programming language, and what is safety to begin with. As a matter of fact, safety refers to the prevention of certain types of bugs and errors that commonly occur in other languages like C and C++. Things like null pointer dereferencing, dangling pointers, buffer overflows, and data races. And I will create separate videos to explain each one of those errors. Maybe not all of them. Um, I will choose two, let's say pointer dereferencing or data races, or maybe dangling pointers. So let's try to understand what references is. Actually, borrowing and references are the same thing. Well, basically, you create references by borrowing from the original owner of that value okay so we have as we explained before in the last lesson we have only one owner which is the variable that has only one value so you cannot have multiple owners for the same value so let's say that references in rust enables you to borrow values without taking the ownership and this is very important for efficient memory management. Actually, Rust doesn't allow you to have multiple owners for the same value. That's why we have to create references by borrowing from the owner. Also, it's very important to know that references can be both immutable and mutable. So immutable references allow you borrowing without modification. And of course, mutable reference allows you borrowing with the ability to modify the data. And to create a reference, simply you will add the ampersand before the variable you're referring to. Let me give you an example so you will understand better. Let's declare a variable x equals to 5. That's going to be integer i32. Now I want to create an immutable reference to the x variable. Well, we can declare a new variable. Of course, you can do like that. Okay, but that's not good for the memory. You're going to transfer the ownership of x to r totally. In that case, X will not exist anymore. So instead, we can create a reference. Simply, you will add the ampersand before the X. And of course, uh, Rust being pedantic, add the underscore before the variable's name. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do cargo run. Compiling. And as you can see, value of X is equal to 5. And also value of R is equal to 5 r being the reference to x and it has the same value as x but it's not the owner of that value 5 but rather it's referring to that original owner of that value 5. so mutable reference simply means that you can modify in that reference you can increment you can decrement you know you can modify in that value let me actually try to do it this way first i'm going to show you the error so um I want basically to increase the five by one. The correct way or the proper way to do that is to add an asterisk underscore R. So that's the reference. And I'm going to increment it by one. So immediately you can find that thread squiggly ugly line telling you that cannot assign to um, asterisk underscore R, which is behind a ampersand reference underscore r is a reference so the data it refers to cannot be written it also tells you to consider changing this to be a mutable reference by adding the keyword mute um, first let's go ahead and try to run that again we will have this compiling error telling you that um, the underscore r is a reference so the data it refers to cannot be written and again the suggestion here let underscore r equals to and you can see that he has added the keyword mute after the ampersand to change that um, underscore R to be a mutable reference. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, do like this, like this. So what you will need to do here is to add that keyword mute after the ampersand, but not only to the reference, we'll need to do the same thing for the original owner. So also you will add the uh, keyword mute here. 
So you transferred the original owner to be a mutable owner. And also you made the uh, reference to that owner to be mutable as well. And you can see here that the data type is I32, but the ampersand mute was added to it automatically. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to do cargo run. And indeed, the value of underscore X was updated from five to six. Also, let's try to do this way. Let's do minus three. So it will increment by one and it will decrement by three. Let's take a look to what we will have. So we'll have value of underscore X equal to three because from five to one, that's six, six minus three equals to three. So what we'll have actually if we will um, print that value of R, if we'll do like that, for example, what will happen? Immediately you can find here that there is a squiggly line and an error, of course, telling you that cannot borrow underscore X as immutable because it's also borrowed as mutable. Immutable borrow occurs here. Okay. This is one very important rule. You can have only one mutable reference or many immutable references. Okay, so you can have either one mutable reference to a value or any number of immutable references. Okay, so suppose that we have a struct representing a bank account. So let's create quickly a struct that's going to be called bank account. And that struct is going to hold the owner, which is string, and also will hold the balance, which is going to be F64 data type. Now let's create a function to withdraw money from the account. I'm going to create an implementation for the bank account. And inside here, I'm going to create that function. Uh, we will call it simply withdraw. So listen carefully. In this withdraw function, I want to ensure that we cannot simultaneously have mutable access to the account to update the balance and immutable access for reading the owner's name, for example. Okay, so how to do that? Simply, I'm going to um, add here mutable reference to self, also amount F64 as input as a parameter, and I'm going to print so withdrawing whatever the amount is and whoever the owner of that um, account is. Okay, so we'll have here amount and self.owner. And of course, we're going to decrement the balance by the amount being withdrawn from the account. So self.balance is uh, being decremented by the amount. Now let me create a second function to check the balance of the account. I'm going to call it check underscore balance. It's going to take reference to self only. So again, listen carefully. I want to ensure that while we are checking the balance, which has immutable access, no other part of our code is modifying the balance, which is uh, which has a mutable access, right? So the way to implement that is um, we're going to simply print ln. I'm going to say account owned by um, has a balance of whatever. And here self.owner and self.balance. Now let's go ahead to the main function here. So I'm going to create a mutable variable, which is account. That's going to be equal to the bank account struct and we'll have the owner Alice. Okay. And we'll uh, change that to string to underscore string. And the balance, the balance, I've put it here F64. So it's going to be floating point. So let's do 150, 150.55, uh, for instance. So that's our account. Now let's do the immutable borrow to check the balance. So here, immutable borrow. To check the balance, I'm going to take the account dot check balance. Let's go ahead and run that. Account owned by Alice has a balance of 100 
50.55. Okay? Now, um, let's do the mutable borrow to withdraw money. So we'll withdraw 50, for example. So account dot withdraw, and we're going to withdraw 50 points. Uh, 50 point 50. Uh, let's do 50. Okay, let's do 45 uh, point 50, whatever. Okay, control S to save, open the integrated terminal and again. Let's uh, run that again. And what do we have here? Withdrawing 45.5 from account owned by Alice. Okay, so everything looks to be working perfectly. We have the immutable borrow. So we're checking only the balance, but also we have mutable borrow to withdraw the money. And of course, you can check the balance again after the withdrawal. So if you will do like that, control S, let's run that again. You will find here that the account uh, owned by Alice has a balance of 105.05. Okay, that's deducted or uh, withdrawn or de decreased by 45.5. And why this has successfully compiled, we have said that you can have only one mutable borrow or many immutable borrows, but you cannot have both at the same time. The reason why the code compiled successfully because each borrow, the, the check balance and withdraw here in both functions, each is in its own scope, so they do not overlap. And therefore, there is no simultaneous mutable and immutable borrowing of account. So that's it for borrowing and references. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.